Hello again guys, Solid Snake Fits here and as promised, like I said in my last video I had a little surprise coming and I'm like a little school boy Oh, it's like being Christmas day again Oh, right, chill out man So, what we've got is a package which has come from China imported and what I'm hoping is in this box because I haven't actually opened it yet is a WEL85 gas blowback so before I actually get into uh, opening it up and, and having a look at it and things I'll just uh, go over a few things with how much it actually cost me so from Red Wolf Airsoft in China sent um, express delivery uh, the actual rifle itself cost £220 the shipping cost £61.27 which is not bad from Hong Kong to here uh, and then there was also a customs charge obviously 20% bring it into Britain of £64.65 which brought the total cost to £346.10 which is cheaper than any other UK supplier that I could find that's including delivery and the customs charge so I was, was pretty amazed with that. Uh, like I say, the UK um, stockists that all I could find were Wolf Armouries. And that one was at £453.49, including v uh, VAT and delivery. The next one was JD Airsoft, which was £374.98, including VAT and delivery. Now you might only think, well Paul, that's only, what, 30 quid. Um, less uh, more than what you paid to get from China but if you think about it I've only still waited only a week and I've saved myself 30 quid which could go on another gas mag because obviously they're 30 quid because gas mags are pretty expensive um, and action hobbies were the cheapest in the UK that I could find um, but they didn't have any in stock which was a bit of a shock so that's why I went to um, Red Wolf Airsoft instead in Hong Kong because theirs was £349.98 and delivery was 7 dollars 99 to 8 99 depending which supply you had. So between those prices there and that one is not bad. I've just gone for the cheapest one and it's obviously paid off. But anyway, that's me waffling on about that. <coughs> obviously, with custom charges and things like that, um, if you are importing a RIF, don't forget you've got to be UCAR registered because otherwise the customs people will just confiscate it there and then. They'll say no chance, you've got a replica firearm coming in. That's if you think it's replica, they might even think it's normal and send the police round thinking you're trying to uh, you're trying to buy a real firearm. But anyway, I waffle on again as usual. So, let's get into this box. I've been dying to see it. Dying to see it. Don't be gay. Don't actually be gay. Oh, well, I'm like a little child. I'm like a little child. As you can tell my voice, I'm like a little fucking child. Uh, along. Now, when people do the packaging tests and everything like that, I'm not really going to review the packaging. I'm just going to make sure, just obviously show you that it is secured and it is tightened down for delivery so things won't get broken. Put that there. Proving that it came from China because of all the delivery notices and all the rest of it. Custom charge leaflet, that sticker even not leaflet, £64.56 uh, and my UKR number that they've written on the outside of the paper as well so it's even more information for the customs as well as writing the UKR number on the invoice um, and everything like that which obviously covers me for importing for games so I can use these riffs in the UK. So, the box there, just pretty basic, brown box as any other boxes. WE glass, gas blowback, black edition, here's the moment of truth, watch, there'll be nothing in this box now and I'll be so pissed. Oh, well that's a bit shocking with, um, 
packaging wise, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just styrofoam quaver things and it's tie wrapped down. <laughs> so I'm glad that the gun is actually worth it because the packaging is um, pretty flimsy if, uh, if we ask us. Quavers, 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 millions of quavers. Quavers everywhere, quavers, quavers, quavers. Uh, get out, quavers. Uh, more quavers, booklets, quavers, booklets. That's just an empty bag. That is just an empty bag. I don't even know why. I don't even. Want, I don't even. I'm not even gonna investigate into why. So we're gonna get it as well. <laughs> Right, let's move the box out of the way. Just to the side. And so it's low as me now. Q edit. Right, there we go. Ah, right, skizzers. Hup. Hopla. Where's where's the hole? Holy fuck! Right, that's that out there. Move all the quavers out of the way, because it's an irritating thing in the world. Actually reviewing all the pieces now, now I've got the box out of the way and everything. And what we actually get in the kit, so we've got an instruction booklet, we've got an empty bag, as we saw before. <laughs> got a speed loader, got a 30 round metal gas magazine, and the rifle itself. So we'll start off with the actual <coughs> booklet itself. Show you a picture of the gun that you've actually got in front of you, which I find pretty pointless. <laughs> um, you got your instructions for your safeties and your fire selections. Also, how to load a magazine. Yada yada yada. All how to break the gun down. Spare parts and parts numbers. And do's and don'ts. Basic booklet there. Speed loader. BB's go in the end, they all rack up in there, it's got a little plunger bit and also a groove which fits down into that groove, put it against the magazine. I now realise what that bag's supposed to be for, it's supposed to be for the end on here, because then that is supposed to go onto there, and then you push down and in, and it feeds the 30 rounds into the magazine, so I'm guessing that's where that adapter bit should be but it's not but it doesn't bother me anyway because I put that at an angle and it'll work either that or a speed loader at an angle and it'll go in so magazine 30 round metal magazine gas reservoir as most magazines on the bottom gas hammer on the back we have got uh, obviously where the BBs come in, go in um, where the gas comes out of the little switch on top is for the open and close bolt side of things I believe if it's towards you with letting this little um, latch latch up if it's empty the bolt will lock back um, but if it is at this position go in slide there we go which keeps the latch down, the gun will just continue to fire even if it's empty. So the bolt will just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it won't lock in. So it's a pretty pointless waste of gas, really, because the reservoirs on this are unbelievable. Um, I shall do a firing test and work out how much gas actually goes in, because obviously the size of that gas magazine for 30 rounds. My pistol magazine takes quite a lot, and that's 36 rounds, but this is obviously a huge magazine, so the gas well in this must be amazing. 
So, that's the magazine out of the way. So the actual rifle itself. Oh, getting too old for this. Move forward. If you're wondering why I've got it on a white sheet so you can see things better. So, it basically, it looks like the real steel. It feels like the real steel. But the only difference is, there's no UN marking stamps on it, like there is on my Ares, on my AEG. Um, which is a bit of a shame, but it makes up for it in, in other places, for realism. Um, the handguard, I'm going to put the Daniel Defence on it, which I've mentioned in the video. I'm just going to wait for the adapter to come, so I can get that whapped on. And I'll do a little video of that as well. So, fire selector, half a repetition, as we know. A for automatic, as we know, it's nice. Bolt, uh, bolt release actually works on the W gas blowback. I didn't think they did, but they actually do. Um, charging handle, that's now hammer to the back. Safety switch works, because now it will not let me fire. Push it across, so then fire is now showing. The hammer will now go forwards. Yeah. Yeah. and the sights oh they're beautiful that actually is really beautiful that's better than the AEG sights the four blade on the foresight is amazingly crisp and clear I'm impressed with that anyway it's me being an uber geek again gas parts as the real steel is in the handguard. Doop -doop -doop -doop. Sling mount, which I'm more than likely going to take and swap to the other side so I can have it all on this side. Does that sling mount slide? Yes, it does, but it's very stiff. On the butt plug. Yeah, the butt plug. On the butt stock. <laughs> butt plug. Class, man, that's staying in. Um, so, shall we split the gun? To split the gun is this pin here on the lower receiver. This one comes out. I would sit it in there like the real steel, but there's no ball bearing on the end, so it just physically comes straight out. Then this pin up the top here by the butt stock, not the butt plug, <laughs> which oh, is going to be pretty stiff. There we go. That one has to come out all the way as well. And this needs to come out, make sure it doesn't spring everywhere. Do it nice and steady. That's a lower receiver taken off. Ugh. Lift that up and out. Spring and guides. Charging handle. Bolt assembly. well greased up and chamber in there which is where the hop up is it's in there um, I'm pretty sure that's the hop up adjustment there for an allen key I've known many people say that the hop up is a little allen key in there that seems very awkward to get to but maybe it is maybe you now it looks yeah no that little grub key in there apparently is to do it and that is it basically field stripped which is nearly as close to the real steel as you're gonna get really unless you actually buy a real steel actual firearm so yeah that's the gun split down so obviously because this shoots between 420 and 430 FPS, so it says on the website, um, I've also had to buy, oh, I don't have it ready. A little end pass for the WE open bolt, as you can see on there. And that was bought from Mill Spec Solutions, a very helpful chap on there who just deals in um, 
gas blowbacks. Uh, so that's from him. That's a plug for him as well. So that then, that valve, once I would take it all apart, I would take these parts off, which I'll do a video of that as well. Take that off, the whole um, cylinder would come out. You split it and then within the gas inlet, it splits in half, as you can see the seam around there. You gently pull them apart and then you put the valve into it back together, put it all together and then um, this valve is also adjustable so before you put it in you can adjust it back and forth put it all together and then do your firing test see what it's firing at so you can get it to the desired FPS which you need for your gameplay um, now there's a little bit of wear on that bolt I don't know whether I may look at upgrading eventually to um, an aftermarket bolt because I believe uh, what are the dudes on YouTube who's got one an American dude check his channel out uh, I think it's MG Maxorus I can't think now hang on a moment <coughs> plug his channel because he's got some class videos of his gas blowback L85 uh, bear with me I'll edit this bit so I just actually say what it is Maximus MJG Maximus MJG bottom video and like I say he's got his gas blowback L85 where he's completely modded it um, because he says he doesn't like the cheek stock the cheek rest he doesn't like the um, hand guard so he's putting Daniel Defence on which obviously I'm doing as well but um, he's also modified the inner barrel he's got the newer he's got an upgraded um, bolt and bolt carrier which is bought online um, and he's modded it up and he showed you about the end pass and he even shows you how to fit the end pass um, he's a top block get it looked at he's got loads more gas blowback um, videos on there as well he's got an M4 as well a little CQB proper special forces one that looks class he's really worked well on that but anyway I'm steering off the subject with that so this is the L85A2 gas blowback by WE field stripped the other thing before the firing test, which I forgot to mention, is the actual bolt itself. It does not lock back with no magazine in it, because obviously there is no um, no way of stopping it. The real steel obviously does. Um, this is the only gripe I've got with this, is the fact that it doesn't lock back. I mean, maybe there's something wrong with my gun. Um, but I would expect this to lock back into place. which it doesn't with no magazine in so if obviously you, any of you boys out there that have got one of these um, know exactly how to lock it back with no magazine in or what could be possibly going wrong because like I say the the magazine ugh, when it's empty well when it's got the the latch up to say that it's empty and the bolt will hold back the bolt holds back as it should to say the chamber is empty and it needs a new magazine so the magazine would come out bolt still staying open you would then move the magazine across to say that it's a new magazine bolt release actually works on this And that is there. So I mean, I mean, it just seems a bit daft. I don't understand how it just doesn't lock back on its own. Because it's obviously locked back there, but something's got to tell it to lock back, and it's that little thing there. So I, I don't know. What happens if I put the magazine back in again with that little four bit up? It doesn't go forward. Like I say. What does, it, what does it do if there's nothing in? It still goes forward, which is fine. So in order for me to lock it back, I'll have to put the magazine in. Yeah, so the magazine's got to go in to lock it back, take it out, to inspect the chamber. <laughs> if you're practicing your re-steals with your gas, yeah. But yeah, that was my only gripe with this gun, is that. It just, 
just that little bit. Could you could have just had that little bit extra, and I would have been happy. But yeah. So, like I say, like I promised. Next, the firing test. Yeah. So, as the actual test went outside, it was pretty chilly uh, with the wind and things like that, and a lot of. Um, Factors were going into the fact that the gun was seizing. So what I've done is done a quick video of uh, indoors with it warm, with no rounds in the chamber, just so you can see the actual action of the gun itself. So before the actual firing test, here's the action. Then the firing test will be after outside. Cheers, dudes. Right, guys. So I've let it get a little bit warmer. Um, obviously because I'm back in my house now. So I've got no rounds in the magazine. I've got the um, open bolt latch pulled shut so the bolt will just keep shooting and I can actually show you what it, sh it should be doing as it's on fully automatic so fully automatic it's pretty sweet fully automatic for a single shot just to give it a bit of, of a breather in between Pretty responsive as well for for that. I say we're just going to go into fully automatic mode now until there's no gas left, and let's like say the bolts back. So we'll just keep going until it either uh, freeze seizes or the gas runs out. Hopefully, we'll just keep going until the gas runs out because we're warmer indoors. So onto automatic. There's no rounds in here, obviously, so I don't know why I'm cocking it. Anyway, here we go. You ready? I'm ready for this. That was nice. That was cold. It's really cold. Yeah. So obviously before it was because it got too cold. But you can see the efficiency of it when it is warm. And that is one hell of a gas gun. Now then guys, it's Solid Snake Fits here with the shooting test, as promised. So we've got one 30 round magazine, full of gas, one WE blowback rifle. And first things first is we're going to chrono it, see what it's shooting without the end pass in it. We are shooting with 0.25s, as I normally do. They're on single shot, first shot. Here we go. 342, 347, 333, 351, 336. Now, like I say, that's with 0.25s. So, in the British, cold British weather that we have, we put another 40 FPS on that for 0.2s. It's going to be looking around the 370, 380 mark, um, which is obviously well over these sight limits. So that's why we have to put an M pass in it. Right, so like I say, efficiency test now. So we've got 30 rounds all loaded in. We've got a full magwell of gas. So we're going to see how well it does on just single shot. See how many shots we can actually get out of one. I must have put loaded 31 in there. So, see how many more it goes to until it actually gives up. So that's 31. It's 31, remember? 31. So back in. 32, 33. 
53. And this is still on the one magazine. On the one fill of gas. 53. 53. 53, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, and it locks up great. Oh, it's too cold, well done Paul. But yeah, typical British weather. Yeah. So, typical British weather, we've got 80, 83, was it 81 or 83 shots out of one magazine with me refilling it. So it's not too bad at all. Um, <coughs> next I think we're going to have to do the automatic fire, see what we can get out of that. Right, so that will go. Put it on automatic and see what automatic does now then, shall we? Which sounds pretty cool, but like I say, because it's a little bit cold, I can feel the bolt itself is actually sticking. That's first burst. I think it's because it's the end of the gas as well. Which is a shame, but at least you got to see it right at the beginning. Fully automatic. Which I'm pretty sure it does do better. But that is the way the cookie crumbles as they say so this is solid snake fits signing off on the firing test of the LWE L85 A2 See what automatic does now, shall we?